Hi again then guys and welcome to another installment of Beards and Cars, the podcast style series here on the channel where incidentally you can download it in its podcast form by clicking the link down below, jumping over to the SoundCloud page and grabbing the audio only version if that's what you're into. But of course for the moment the visual component is a little bit more beneficial for the channel and I want to thank you guys once again for being so supportive of the guest episodes that we've had recently. This is now the third one of course that we've had and for any of you who have been around for a while on the channel you'll know this guy. You've seen him a few times on screen and also on the voice acting side of things in some of the collab videos and that is of course Nismo Nath. How's it going? So for this particular episode, I wanted to do something a bit different, and Nathan certainly agreed with this as well, and even suggested some of it, I think, and that is to draw from some of Nathan's real-world racing exploits and experience, something which we don't really talk about all that much on the channel, it tends to be the more virtual stuff, but actually getting his perspective as somebody who has raced on a budget in a more attainable way than what many younger people for instance might think it could be and also for those who don't know he has raced multiple times in the 24 hours of lemons in new zealand so basically to get his perspective on that first of all and then maybe to get more into that side of things where how do you get into it how do you afford it what kind of budget do you need what kind of car should you go for what kind of racing so basically i'll just Go over to you now, Noth, with your experience, first of all, in Lemons. Yeah, well, um, I've, I've been doing Lemons for about three years now. This is this will be my uh, fourth year in it. Uh, in that time, we've done five events. So over here in New Zealand, they do about three, two to three events a year. Um, obviously, as it gets more popular and more people get involved. Um, I believe over in America and like uh the Cana the canada america region they do a lot more they do like something like 20 odd a year so um but over here we're pretty we're still picking up momentum um and it's pretty much just thousand dollar cars racing hard for 24 hours and that's that's really all there is to it pick a car whack some safety equipment in it and uh try and last the distance Right, I, I looked none into lemons, to be honest. I knew the general concept of affordability and endurance with kind of an element, funnily enough, of like the Gumball 3000 to some degree, where it's not like necessarily the car that wins from what you've told me in the past. The, it's the car that kind of had the best race as well, the most impressive race, I think you mentioned. Yeah, well, the only people that remember the winners are the winners because... <laughs> Yeah, that is that is not the focus of lemons. The focus of lemons is um, just just fun and enjoyment and uh, cost effectiveness. Um, they do a lot of prizes for uh, the sort of the wackier aspects of racing. So, for example, like um, you know the biggest fix, you'll get people that do engine swaps or they you know smashed it into the wall and they had to fix all manner of things. Um, yeah, stuff like that. Fastest lap. Uh, obviously, is a is a pretty competitive one because they're all cheap piles of uh, of turd. <laughs> um, yeah, that that sort of thing. But but as far as the winner, yeah, nobody really gives two hoots, eh? Because they're all in it for fun, and um, and most of the lemons down here anyway are um are for charity. So oh. yeah, there's there's a real a real charitable. Everyone helps everyone. It's awesome. Oh, that's cool. I, I Like I said, I didn't know half of this stuff about lemons, to be honest. I, I didn't even know it was more than once a year, so that's cool for people who do want to get into it as well. And also that it's in multiple locations, mm -hmm. which makes sense, because <laughs> not everyone can like travel to France yeah. to yeah. enter the 24-hour race, so having it more locally, <laughs> yeah, it, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Well, they do, um, well, because the, the, the lemons in New Zealand is, you know, like I said, it's still a relatively fresh venture, and, you know, it is picking up momentum. Um, they've started to do a few different variants on the race. So as far as the 24 hours, you know, the, the, the non-stop through the night, that only happens once a year. So that's that's a one one time thing. It happens in May. Um, and then September is usually 24 hours, but it's broken up over the case, over the course of a weekend. Uh -huh. So you get, you know, a bit of bit of racing on the Friday, go home, have a sleep, come back on the Saturday, do about probably eight hours and then the same on the Sunday. So right. That's fair enough. Yeah. yeah. That and makes, then makes um, sense. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you actually get that time to go home and fix your car and all that sort of thing. And then the the most recent one that they've done is a twelve hour, but it's at a different uh, different track. So in New in New Zealand, uh, they've they've only ever done it at the one one track at Hampton Downs, and um, yeah, now they're starting to branch out a bit and sort of two of the various tracks because we've we've got some pretty neat tracks over here so from your racing experience is it focused in all on the lemons events or do you branch out to other stuff have you done other stuff in the past i've done a fair bit of uh, dirt track i started out in dirt track sort of the grassroots uh you know the little uh not quite speedway you know sprint cars and midgets but just the sort of local dirt track scene um go-karts as well Go-karts was, has been a, a big part, just sort of uh, the competitive groups that sort of do that do that sort of uh, karting championships and series. Um, yeah, and then Lemons has sort of been the next step up. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm getting to a point now, I'm, I'm 19, nearly 20, so I'm getting to the point where, you know, I want to start going bigger than Lemons. But obviously Lemons is still, you know, it's still a hoot. Like, it's, it's great fun. But um, yeah, so I'm sort of, I'm not 100% focused on lemons, but obviously it is a very attractive event. So yeah, I, I do love it. it. It holds a special place in my heart. I can definitely see from the way you described it as well with the endurance aspect, fixing the car, that even if it doesn't necessarily teach all of the drivers or even value the aspect of winning like you said which i think is a nice change from most other forms of motorsport the fact that it teaches you the endurance side of things especially for those who do maybe have bigger goals in the future there's got to be tons of benefit for that even if you don't end up fixing the car yourself you can just appreciate what your team is doing in the pits you probably have more patience with them (laughs) than a lot of drivers would not thinking oh why can't they get this done quicker because you know what's involved yourself yeah um but that actually ties in pretty well with something that i wanted to ask you which is currently it's (laughs) currently it's lemons um gran turismo obviously as well what is if there is currently one for you what's the ultimate goal for racing is there something you have in mind mind like le mans nascar blank pain something like that oh like personally yeah yeah um uh gt3 and sort of the the touring car gt car side of things has always been very appealing to me um i've never really had an interest in sort of like f1 and open wheelers and sort of going down that path but um yeah, GT3, uh, obviously V8 supercars is very big here. Uh, Super GT in, in Japan, something like that. Something production-based, but also very close and very, uh, you know, the racing is very fierce. I'd, I'd, I'd say that would be my Formula One, so to speak. Oh, that sounds good. And it would be cool to maybe a couple of years down the line or, or a couple of months, if you're really good, <laughs> to see you in those kind of events. It would be cool yeah. to see somebody who we know, especially not just me knowing you for however long it's been now on the channel, but even people who have watched the videos that we've collabed on. Some of the ones that you've done have been the most successful in that collab series, like when GT6 died, for instance. So to actually... Just in peace. <laughs> yeah, to actually, in effect, like come up with somebody who then gets success later on it's it's a cool thing because i think it's one of the uh advantages of for instance a youtuber compared to a traditional business or a traditional actor even where people just feel like they have a closer connection to someone and that can never be a bad thing i think when it comes to a a fandom so there are definitely people on the channel on the discord as well who would love to see you have more success and would definitely follow you and watch that kind of stuff so that yeah that would be cool with whatever racing you ended up uh in but speaking on the subject of racing again looking less to the future and more to the past we wanted to discuss as well if you had from your experience and maybe just in general things that perhaps didn't apply for you but certainly could have easily if situation or if circumstances even were different and that is what would your general maybe or even some points be for what you think is a good way for maybe somebody who's younger maybe a kid maybe a young adult who would like to do a similar thing to you in their own country not necessarily lemons but anything what would be your like tips Mm. for them to get Mm. into amateur racing um Get into go-karts as soon as you can. Like, oh my gosh, I cannot stress that enough. The sooner you're behind the wheel of a go-kart, 
whether it's in a club or whether you just you know maybe there's a, a higher karting place like a like a indoor karting track just get behind the wheel as soon as you can um oh, first time i got behind the wheel i was like five or six <laughs> and and it was just this you know tiny little cart probably didn't have, probably didn't even do 10 mile an hour but it was just it was just just practice you know and you know you sort of you just work your way up you, you start slow and you get faster you know and then once you've once you've maxed out your little peewee pedal cart then you go up to a you know something a bit quicker something a bit faster and then it, it all just it's the slippery slope you know that that leads to uh getting better in the racing um and also sim, you know, sim racing, Gran Turismo, uh, Project Cars Two, even a set of Corsa, you know, just whatever, whatever you, whatever floats your boat. If you're Xbox, PlayStation, PC, it doesn't matter. Just as long as you're driving and racing and sort of learning that that sort of theory behind it, because um, I've found that sim racing does translate really well into the real world. It, it can do. It can do. It's not. 100% just yet and that's probably a bit of a controversial claim some people may disagree but <laughs> it is um yeah like I said just do as much as you can as soon as you can okay and yeah I, I would certainly even ha being someone who hasn't done racing in real life I could definitely see what you'd mean like some of the principles maybe of the games but don't take it as like a hundred percent gospel <laughs> that a real car is going to handle yeah. like Gran Turismo does, like bouncing off of Tokyo yeah, exactly. walls at two hundred miles an hour. <laughs> um, so when are you? When are you coming to New Zealand to do the lemons? <laughs> well, you have invited me. I think it's probably a year or two ago now. It is definitely something I'd like to do, especially now that obviously I can drive, <laughs> whereas before I couldn't. Um, that helps. That <laughs> yeah. I'd love to do that. Um, I'd have to budget it, obviously, know ahead of time, all that kind of stuff. But it, it's definitely something I'd love to do, have a bit of a crossover there with yourself and me. Um, for those who don't know, yeah. um, Nismo Nath also does some fantastic edits of stuff here on the channel, the YouTube Poop series, which they take a huge amount of work. And if you're not familiar with those, you should also check out his collab video about the behind the scenes aspect, which shows just how in depth it is. And as a creator myself, I love those kind of videos because for people who don't yeah, create stuff, they just have no idea how long it takes. They have no idea what's involved in making something as simple as like a thumbnail, let alone a video, but it's, it's so much more work than people think. So it's cool to have that behind the scenes stuff as well. But I'm trying to recall why I went on to that point now. Oh yeah, we're, we're talking about me, <laughs> me. <laughs> we're, uh, we're talking about me coming over to New Zealand. Uh, yeah, it is definitely something I'd like to do. Um, the only, it wasn't even a race, but the only competitive driving at all that I've done has been actually on carts myself, and that was quite some time ago. It was um, very amateur, like just lax stuff with no real intent to take it further, but. Yeah, it, it would be cool yeah. to go into an event, like you said, that values more like how you finish the race rather than where you finish. I do like that kind oh, of no, exactly, Exactly. And again, it, it, it varies from country to country. I mean, I've only ever really kept tabs on, you know, the New Zealand Lemons, the one in the States. I believe they do some in Australia, but I haven't quite kept in touch. But the principles are all very much the same, like, you know, cheap cars. And of course, how cheap depends. Like in America, you can get, you know, like a, a V8 Pontiac for, you know, a couple of nickels and a, a sad cheese wrapper or something. But um, <laughs> you know, over, over here, it's a bit more, um, whoa, what do you think? You've got Preludes, uh, Nissan Pulsars, Holden Commodores, Ford Falcons, um, even, even the old sort of E36 shaped BMWs. Those are starting to become pretty popular. They go pretty well. And, um, yeah, so so it varies from region to region, but just wherever you are in the world, you know, you just you find something cheap, you build it up, and you just go racing, you know. And and track days too. A lot of the race tracks they do, you know, play days and sort of test days that you can just go out, pay your money, sign your life away, and just you know have a play. And and it's 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 experience at the end of the day. Yeah, it's got to be all good experience. Yeah, the um. The other aspect I wanted to ask you about as well when it comes to racing, we talked about the skill side of things with getting that experience, racing and karting. What advice, if any, would you give on maybe 
especially for somebody who is younger, maybe they still live at home, for instance, on how to budget for that kind of thing or how to present the argument for their parents to budget it for them. <laughs> um, how to budget? Um, well, the way the way that we've always done it, because, you know, my, myself and, and the group that I run, Home Corp, you know, a little bit of self-promotion there, <laughs> Home Corp on Facebook. <laughs> um, the way, we've, the way we've always done it is that we have, have bought the cars, right? So we, we buy the cars, we build them up ourselves. But then as far as, the, as far as all the costs and stuff, we split it equally amongst the drivers. So, you know, if, if, if we have, I don't know, $200 worth of fuel, it's, it, it'll be way more than that. But just for the sake of the argument, $200 worth of fuel, you know, we'd, we'd split that between all the drivers, you know, and then that way there's no no more costs or less costs or you know and you got the fuel and the tires and the spare parts and and however crazy you want to go with the preparation um we usually just split the costs between the teams because that way it usually works out a lot a lot cheaper and and yeah like i said no one's bearing more of the brunt of the cost um but as far as as far as budgeting sponsors also help i mean if you've got any if you know any businesses or people or companies or whatever that that would get behind you and say, "Hey, you know, I'll I'll flick you some money if you put my logo on your car," you know that that's how sponsorship works. So that's not a bad idea. Um, yeah. Other than that, I mean, you know what they say about motorsports: the best way to make a million dollars is to start with two million. So it's <laughs> it, it's not cheap. It's yeah. not cheap. It's never going to be cheap. But, yeah. Um, yeah. I think the good thing, the good thing about budget racing, especially, you know, something like the lemons, is once you've built the car, it's already built. You know, it's assuming you don't wreck it, it's not. You know, you don't have to build a car again. You can use the same car. So, yeah, the the initial outlay is always probably the scariest part. But like I said, assuming you don't damage it or, or wreck it or whatever, it it becomes a lot more cost effective the more you do it. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's probably one of the best forms, especially for amateurs, one of the best forms of racing, I should imagine, in general, as far as budgeting, because of what you said, where it's not like FIA stuff, where regulations change every year, and you have to redesign the aero, like you said, with open wheel racing, it's probably the worst offender for that kind of stuff, completely redesign cars every yeah. year, yeah. or every year even, but yeah, it, it sounds like yeah. a, a great way for people who are on a budget to get into that kind of stuff. And and just to fill in those who don't know, you mentioned the kind of cars that you could easily go for. So for those who aren't familiar with the cars that you drive, you have two currently, don't you? Um yeah, we have we have two regulars and we're building two more at the moment. So we've got the um the Holden Commodore, which is it's one of the older shapes, uh, a VN for those that know know the Commodores. It's it's a Holden VN Commodore. Um, v6 powered pretty it's got the buick it's actually got a buick v6 in it um awesome car bit on the heavy side but it's got heaps of torque so it's just it's a real awesome little one and then um the faster faster lighter one is a an autic pulsar so a nissan pulsar autic edition one of 500 ever made so i'm told apparently it's quite the quite the special one but um yeah that one's not nearly as powerful but it's it's got a lot better cornering so it's actually faster so yeah that, those are the two um the two main vehicles and like i said we do have a couple others under construction at the moment but i can't quite sort of say too much at the moment so just uh <laughs> trade secrets <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Well, there's a there's a few there's a few um a few secrets to be kept yes but yeah, so <laughs> Lotus of Spree depend. next year. <laughs> oh, <laughs> mounted supercharged. Yeah. And, and you do get that. You do get that. There's always going to be someone like we had. Uh, it would have been a couple of lemons ago. Now there was a guy um, who showed up in a 911 GT3 Porsche <laughs> without a word of a lie. It was a GT3 Porsche, right? But the guys at Lemons, and this is the best bit, they have a sense of humour. So they actually let the Porsche race. <laughs> the, um, the only problem was, well, not the problem, they penalized him one million laps. So he started one million laps down. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> you know, they, they, 
they can they can take a joke and it's pretty cool but you know on on a more serious note you do still get people that you know try to sneak little pieces onto their cars you know like a thousand dollars for the car that's great but then if you want to spend a bit more on you know brakes or suspension or something and safety's paramount like don't get me wrong if you want to drop 10 grand on a big safe roll cage that will you know if this won't kill if this won't save you nothing will um they're all for it but if you want to put that same money into a you know evo 4 motor swap with a six-speed sequential dog box and all that sort of thing then you're going to have problems so <laughs> it's it's uh, all about prioritizing in, in lemons i like the aspect as well and i hadn't thought of this before but what you just mentioned actually made me think of it that it sounds almost like all the best parts of like stock car racing the 24 hours of Lamar and like a top gear challenge put together where they'd have to buy something for that price and then just make it work and putting those three things together actually works surprisingly well considering how totally different those three things are. But yeah, it, it certainly sounds like fun. It's, yeah. 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 And it's actually really fun because yeah, the, 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 the way people try to sort of sneak things on and, and, you know, make their cars faster it actually does it's it's a very healthy sort of environment because you get people that you know people that rock up in a, a toyota mr2 right like the original one you know the boxy yeah. one sort of a bit square in the portions you get someone that rocks up like that and then you'll have another team in the other pit that are you, you know they're in an alteza or something but that guy over there knows toyotas so he'll go over there and he'll actually help the mr2 go, you know everyone helps everyone and it's a it's a really healthy you know like nobody tolerates the the prima donna formula one driver that that <laughs> tries to you know tries to go out there and win the lot so it's it's probably one of the healthiest environments you could grow up you know in motorsports it's it's really good yeah, that sounds great and uh, from someone like me for instance with the the kind of community that i've always tried to build on the channel and breaking down the walls between xbox and playstation and gt and forza that what you just mentioned inherently appeals to me even if i never get around to doing it myself i 100 percent have mm -hmm. total support of that kind of system because it just makes more sense in most racing it's all about the one guy it's all about you know focusing in on the winner and nothing else really matters all that much whereas the system that they use and i should imagine yeah. the other countries are similar to some degree i love that i love that community experience where it's not so much about the winner it's about everyone finishing if possible that's that's cool yeah yeah exactly i mean we had um the so the, the last lemons that we had was only a few weeks ago right it was it was september uh blue september which is um supports men's prostate cancer so they do a every september lemons is about prostate cancer and it's raising awareness and fundraising and all that sort of thing and um one of the teams was in a um a toyota current you know the the four wheel steer. It's basically a, a little Celica, right? And um, great, great team. The they were themed up like steampunk, so they had you know bits of metal all sort of stuck to the car, very steampunk style. It was it was good looking car, and they had um, their engine blew, like completely gone. They were out of the race, so they um, they actually they didn't pack up and go home. They stuck around and. Um, come the end of the race they went back out there and actually crossed the finish line and because they crossed the finish line they were classified even though they'd been out for the last you know eight hours yeah that's great i love that kind of thing yeah mm, so mm. so it's it's not about the yeah it's not about the winners or the the fastest you know most dominant cars it's it's you know stories like that that's what everybody will remember the race for so yeah uh, it definitely sounds like something that younger people should get into, even if they do plan to go into the more pure competitive stuff later. I think a lot of those principles and the idea of looking out for other people, not just totally yourself, if they even take some of that into you know, whoever ends up being an F1 driver or the next sensation in whatever it may be, if they can keep some of that mentality, it will certainly make them a much nicer person than a lot of the drivers in mainstream motorsport seem to be. Yeah, yeah. No, and that's... That's that's part of why I I firmly believe that lemons is is a great breeding ground for you know for racing. I mean, you won't get you won't get too much experience in the ways of like racing, you know, sprint racing. But you know, you you'll you'll get your car, your your sort of 
craftsmanship, your um, your race craft, all that sort of thing. And value for dollar, it's the most mileage you'll do for the money. So it's awesome. That sounds fantastic. And unless there's anything else that you wanted to add to that, I think it was a pretty cool interview and nice to have an actual race driver on the channel for a change. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, like I said, man, let me know when you're coming and I'll um, I'll be more than happy to accommodate you. <laughs> yeah, I, I would certainly love to do that. I don't know, like I said, when I'll get around to it, but it would be a lot of fun to do it for sure. Probably do some kind of cross-channel collab with the team and uh, maybe a vlog-style video of some kind. But yeah, that would, that would definitely be cool. Um, so yeah, I want to thank Nismo Nath once again yeah. for coming on, especially with the drastically different time zones compared to all of the other uh, collabs that we've done so far. Maverick, of course, is in England anyway. Ness is over in Canada. Gonna but, go but, say again, sorry? Going to go to sleep now. <laughs> yeah, because it's what, like 8 or 9 p.m. for you? Who am I kidding? I'll be up for another couple hours racing. <laughs> yeah, no, it's quarter to nine. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, like a full 11, 12-hour difference between us, yeah. Oh, yeah um, but yeah. yeah, I want to thank Nismo Nath once again for coming on for this episode. He's definitely going to be on again, doubtless talking about something else next time. And I'm really enjoying the feedback that these collab episodes have had so far with, like I said, with Maverick, with Ness, with Nismo. We're going to have others too probably in the future, maybe even more than two of us, although that might get a bit crazy on the sound side of things. Uh -huh. But that is it overall. <laughs> that's it overall for this particular episode thanks once again to nath be sure to check out his youtube poop series on of course youtube and that's it for this installment so like i said grab the audio version from soundcloud down below if you'd like to listen to that and thanks once again to nismo but Ooh. until next time we'll see you then see you later guys <laughs> and for now as always thanks for watching